Greetings all and welcome to today's show. Today we're travelling back to 1984 to look back at one of the influential game titles of the day. Today I'm taking a look at Saber Wolf. Saber Wolf is probably best known as being a Sinclair Spectrum release, but today I'll be looking at the Commodore 64 version, as I have slightly better looking boxes for this version. Saber Wolf is a game that those born after the 1980s are unlikely to be very familiar with, but there's a good chance that you may have heard of one of its sequels, Night Law, which is still talked about a lot more today than the previous entries in the Saber Wolf series. The series of Saber Wolf, Underworld and Night Law formed a successful development period for Ultimate Play the Game Studios, a small backroom operation that had already pumped out classics such as Attic Attack back in 1983. If you're looking to collect the Commodore 64 version of the game, then you can expect to look out for some very decent packaging. Although there are various re-releases and budget releases, the most collectible is the first edition, sometimes known as the Black Box Edition. A range of games were released in this packaging format and oozed quality. The matte black box along with interesting cover designs made these really stand out from the smaller standard cassette boxes of the day. Inside the box you get an English colour manual explaining the backstory, game's features and loading instructions. You also get a much cheaper black and white multilingual manual. Most important of all though is the cassette tape. Something that you don't find in games these days is the upgrade offer card. Simply send back your cassette along with £9.95 and you'll receive the disc version of the game along with its sequel, Underworld. Or you could take up the offer of sending back both cassettes, if you have them, with just £4. For younger viewers I'd like to explain what must now seem like a very strange practice. You see, cassette tapes were notoriously slow to load. The process of pressing play and then sitting around for up to 10 minutes for a game to load was a huge drawback when wanting to play your favourite games. You also had to rewind the tapes at the end of use. Floppy disks were more expensive and you did need a separate disk drive to play them with, but the loading speeds were much faster. Whereas it was common for microcomputers in the early 80s, such as the Sinclair Spectrum and the Commodore 64, to use cassettes, by the next generation of computer, machines such as the Atari ST and the Commodore Amiga had fully made the switch to floppy disks. For now though, let's fire up the cassette player. The Saber Wolf series is led by the protagonist, Saberman. Each game sees Saberman in a different adventure, usually involving fighting various monsters. The jungle setting of Saber Wolf is both visually appealing and dangerous. I have to say, it's been a long while since I've played this game and it's every bit as difficult as I remember. The aim is to navigate through a maze to collect the pieces of an amulet. Once you have all the pieces of the amulet, you can escape via the dungeon. This sounds easy, but in practice it's anything but. On every screen dangerous animals spawn and attack you. To make things even more challenging, if you wait around too long, an indestructible bushfire will spawn underneath you. Most monsters will attack and behave in the same way. However, there is a native that will not be killable to you. There are also pink rhinos that you shouldn't wake up, and regular rhinos that cannot be killed and must be avoided. You have only your saber to see off all the enemies, so holding down the fire button is highly recommended. Periodically, you will encounter plants that spawn. If you run over these, you receive a random power-up, some useful, some not so useful. Whilst the game is fun at times, the design does nothing to help you as a player. Enemies will often unfairly spawn beneath you, and the repetitive graphic tiles can make it very difficult to memorise the maze. This makes it a real challenge. I'm not making too many excuses though, I'm also terrible at playing this one. Despite the challenge, I do enjoy Saber Wolf, for what it's worth. The game is fast and furious, and each time I did want to come back and progress just that little bit further. So, if you're looking to put this one in your collection, how much should you pay? Well, for the non-black box editions, pay almost nothing at all. It's likely that you can find the budget release for next to nothing, or in a bundle with other tapes. For the black box edition, mint in box though, expect to pay anywhere up to £10, or around $17 US. Ultimate Play the Game Studios releases are holding their value at the present time. The sleek boxes and overall good games are an attractive item for collectors. Saber Wolf is perhaps best summed up as product of its time. Its pace is insanely fast but addictive. For a quick sample of retro game action, I can definitely recommend investing some time and money in this one. 
it's one of the iconic games of the 80s. For casual gamers, this one is also worth picking up as a budget release. I can't promise you it's the best game ever made, but it's certainly fun just to give it a try. So, have you been able to complete Save Wolf yet? Let me know in the comments. Hello again, and I hope you enjoyed today's show. Thank you for the view. Remember, you can always comment, like, subscribe, and find us on the social media sites below. Happy collecting!